Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting. I'm Nicole and this is episode 28. This is the first episode of the year of 2023. And thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for being here and chatting with me. I have some finished objects to show you because it's been a while since I've had a regular episode because I did Vlogmas and things like that. And so I basically didn't do a regular episode for the month of December, but I like to post an episode every two weeks otherwise. But before I hop into finished objects, I have three sort of like administrative things I'd like to talk about. First administrative thing I wanna talk about is I wanna do a giveaway. Basically the Bit and Mitten donated for my Vlogmas a yarn advent, and you'll see it in the project that I'm knitting. And I enjoyed it so much. And there were so many beautiful stitch markers as part of it and there was just so much yarn in a full skein at the end that I just wanted to share like some of the wonderful things that I received. So basically I got this wonderful full skein and I think it's so beautiful. I undid it so I could kind of show you. There's these greens and these like pops of pink. And the final color was called All Decked Up Christmas Tree. And this is an 80-20 base. I think these would be just so beautiful for socks. And I also think that this would be an excellent um, like hat. You could hold it double or like a Musselberg. You could do it single for a Musselberg. Anyway, so I want to do this as a giveaway just to sort of share share the joy that I got, like pass it along. And so the giveaway today will be this yarn with a couple other goodies. Like I'll throw in some extra treats and I'll throw in a couple of their stitch markers or progress keepers because I had so many and they are so amazing. And so I will just share that. And so to be entered for the giveaway, just comment below and I will announce it then the winner next podcast. And for your comments, I would love to know what your favorite make of 2022 was or what you're looking forward to making this year. I asked a similar question on Instagram, like what was your favorite make of 2022? And I learned a lot. Like I learned about sweaters I didn't even know about. So I would love to hear about that question but also if whatever you're hoping to make too in 2023. All right so that was the first kind of administrative thing. The second administrative thing is in February so like literally a month from now a little more than a month but like a month and a half ish a month and a week I don't even know the date <laughs> like a month and 10 days. Okay, is the Rose City Yarn Crawl. So Portland's called the Rose City, Portland, Oregon. It's called the Rose City if you don't know that because they have so many roses. There's an international, like, international test garden. It's amazing. I don't live in Portland. I live outside of Portland. And like, even where I live, like, tons of roses. It's just a very apropos name, the Rose City. And so the Rose City Yarn Crawl is essentially like all these Portland yarn stores you can go to over a weekend and there's a passport and you get a stamp. And when you make a purchase at the yarn store, you can get a free pattern. There's a knit along going along, going on right now. And I've done the mystery knit along for two years, but I just decided to not do that this year. You'll see why, but <laughs> anyway. I'm going to it and I would love to have a meetup with some people. I started this podcast like over a year ago so that I could have knitting friends and I've made knitting friends 
and I would just love to have meet up. Last year, I met up with McKaylee from Breaking Yarn, who has a podcast, and I also met up with Courtney, who's Shay Crochet on Instagram, and of course, I met up with Anna from Zebra Yarns as well. So yeah, just, I have a vlog of the Rosier Yarn Crawl if you're interested, I'll link it below. Um, last year I had no intent to going to all of the stores and I ended up going to all the stores. And so similar to last year, I have no goals. I don't know if I'm gonna be going to all the stores or not. I don't know what days I'll be going. Like I really have no goals, but I would love to meet up. So feel free to DM me on Instagram or comment below, however, email, but I'd love to have a meetup if you're interested. Okay, and my last administrative thing before hopping into finished objects is I was hosting through 2022, most of 2022, a Zoom knit night once a month on Thursdays. And with December being wild and traveling, it kind of fell away from me. But this January, I received some messages that people would like to do this again. So we're going to resume the Zoom nights, uh, the Zoom knit nights, the first Thursday of every month. And I will be posting information about that in Ravelry. We have a Ravelry group, Professor Pearl. And I also will be posting about it on Instagram in my stories. And so you'll have to follow me on Prof Pearl to find that information. So I will post the Zoom information in those two locations and hopefully you use one of them. And if you don't use either Ravelry or Instagram, you can just email me and I can give you the information as well. Professor Pearl Podcast at gmail.com. All that information is linked below as will be all the links to the things I'm talking about today in the description box below. All right, let's hop to the finished objects. Oh, <laughs> before we have to finish objects, maybe I should talk about what I'm wearing. <laughs> you can tell I'm out of practice from um, recording episodes. So I am wearing a knitting t-shirt. It says, nevertheless, she knitted with this beautiful graphic and it is from Nurbird Makery. I often will buy a knitting t-shirt on the Rose City Yarn Crawl, actually, but I did not buy this on the Rose City Yarn Crawl. I bought this at Indie Untangled West in 2017, so, no, 2018, Indie Untangled West 2018, I bought this. And then this sweater is the Kinnikin, I think that's how you say it, and it's this oversized cardigan. It is exceptionally warm and cozy for a dreary gray day here in the Pacific Northwest. What's the temperature? Temperature is 52 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So it's like I could wear this kind of as a jacket, honestly, it's so warm. And I knit this out of loopy mango yarn that my husband Kyle, who's also a knitter, he gave me this yarn for Christmas. Christmas 2017 maybe, I actually don't remember, but it's a very, very large gauge. So if you are looking for a sweater you could make in a weekend, this is it. And I just think it has a very modern look. I love wearing this. My probably only hold up to wearing it more than I do is that the loopy mango mohair, it's like mohair so soft, is fair it sheds a lot and so sometimes i don't feel like wearing it if i know i'm going to be like if it's going to be shedding like one time i wore this to the portland auto show and you like when you go to a car show you like sit in cars and like this was like rubbing on the seats and i was kind of embarrassed because i was like in these nice new cars i was like leaving a trail of mohair but if i'm at home i don't care if i leave a trail of mohair <laughs> there's some duster mohair anyway <laughs> So now let's really hop into finished objects. <laughs> I have three finished objects since I last recorded a podcast in November. I did a lot more knitting than that, but I only finished three things, <laughs> I think. 
So the first finished object of 2023 is a short sleeved cropped sweater. There it is. This is the Sultana Crop by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knits. Okay. It's got this really fun four color yoke. And then the body are these fun little repeating stitch. This is knit in DK weight yarn. I knit mine out of yarn from Leading Men Fiber. Oh, people will probably want to know the colors. I better go grab those. <laughs> Here are the colors. One of the colors was called Wind Chill. I think that is this beautiful blue. One of the colors is called Sugar Plum Fairy, and that is this one, I think. It's like, I was gonna call it variegated, but it's like speckly variegated. And then one of the colors is called Darkest Hour, and that is this black, it's a tonal black. And then the fourth color is Starlit. And that is the hot pink. Okay, so this sweater was started December of 2021. I had, not this past December, but December before, was gonna knit this for my mother for Christmas. And I have this really cute hot cocoa stitch marker or progress keeper. I don't know where it's from. It's so cute. My mom has a matching one. And I, that is where I was at in December of 2021. So basically in December of 2021, I knit the yoke and I lost steam on it. And then it became one of my infinite amount of whips I have and just sat in a project bag. So this December, we were flying home to Illinois. We live in Oregon, but we were flying home to Illinois. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna pack this and this is gonna be my travel knitting. And it was the only knitting I brought with me on the plane. So it like forced me to start knitting it again. And, but I just immediately like fell in love with it again because this, I love knitting color work in D DK and I do love knitting superwash yarn in like superwash DK and color work. I don't know, it's just so bouncy and squishy. So I just really fell in love with it again. But as you'll see through the rest of the podcast, I got very distracted over Christmas knitting other things. So I really just finished this yesterday for my mom. So two Christmases in a row, she did not get it. But my hope is to send it to her for Valentine's Day. So it, this is unblocked. And so I am going to block it, but I wanted to, I knew if I started to block it last night, it wouldn't be dry enough to show on the podcast. So here it is, ends woven in, beautiful. Okay, some details. I knit a size medium for my mom, and that's because I've knit two Soldanas already. This is my third Soldana. And I knit one in a size medium and one in a size large. And I've also knit one of my Soldanas in the same exact yarn base, same exact yarn, um, like different colors, but same base. I knit an entire Soldana out of Leading Men Fiber Art. So basically I had like swatched already with an entire sweater. And so my mom, when I was visiting in December of 2021, tried on sweaters and like found like kind of the fit. So. Basically, I knit her size medium, but I did knit her length longer than what I've knit mine, but it's still cropped. So cute. And so, yeah, this, I'm not a gift knitter though. Um, <laughs> that's partly, probably the issue here. <laughs> Why it took me so long is, um, yeah, I just, I typically don't knit a lot of gifts. Some people are gift knitters. Like I think my mother is a gift knitter 
um, you know, you watch various podcasts and some people just like really knit and give gifts. And I am just really not one of those people, but my mom is very knit worthy. So, and I love this pattern. So yeah. Okay. So I brought my other, to show you kind of blocked ones. I brought my other ones. So this one was the first Aldana I made and it's blocked and well-worn. Actually it's a very similar vibe to this, like bright, you know, there's pink, there's blue. <laughs> and yeah, so this one, the yarn was made out of, the yarn was Stitch Together Studio. And I don't remember any of the colors. It's been so long. But I love this one. It looks so cute. This one I knit very cropped. <clears throat> then the second Soldana I made it was also out of Leading Men Fiber Arts Yarn. This one was a size medium, very cropped. This one was a size large, where it's still cropped, but it's like a little bit longer. Basically, I knit this one so like the jeans that I wear regularly, I could wear this with jeans or a skirt. This one, I only have like one or two pairs of jeans that I can wear these with um, in a way that I feel comfortable. So I knit a Christmas version. I actually have enough yarn left over from this to make another one for Matilda to match. And that has, I said that like a year ago and it didn't happen again because I think I have to put in the effort to figure out the size because the Soldana pattern doesn't go down to children's sizes. So I would need to put in the effort. I know what I want to do. I want to use the Strange Brew knitting book from Tin Can Knits that has a wide range of sizes. And I want to pick her size for a top down sweater. And I want to pick DK weight, her size, and then just sort of like modify this pattern to marginally look like mine. So, but I, I think I'm just like, the idea of like doing that work has stopped me. So that, I've knit three of these. I actually would like to knit a fourth one. I would like to knit a Halloween one. So picture this, this black, and then where there's blue, like um, a, like a bright orange. And then I would want either this kind of like chevron, this arrow. I would either want this in a purple or like a lime green. If I did purple, I'd want like kind of a light lime green kind of speckle situation for the background. Or if this is lime green, I want like just like a white speckly for here. Anyway, I think that'd be cool. But it's like, do I really want to knit this pattern four or five times? Like I get in these like, if you watch this podcast, you know this is how I get where I just like knit the same sweater over and over. And it's like, I should knit other designers and other sweaters. Here's my pile of Sodanas. Um, <laughs> so if you have a suggestion for a colorwork sweater that has at least four colors of DK weight, I would love it. Um, or if you have a suggestion for a Halloween sweater, I know it's January, I shouldn't be thinking about Halloween sweaters, but like I should start thinking about it. So maybe I can knit it this summer so that I would have it for this fall. Anyway, I could knit a four Sildana or I could knit something else. Give me your thoughts. <laughs> okay, one last thing. I just posted a reel yesterday on Instagram because if, if you are a colorwork knitter, like you already know this, but I do think that the Sildana is a fun way to think about color dominance. And color dominance when you knit color work is this idea that like you're being, when you're knitting your color work, one color pops and one color is kind of set back. And so sometimes you can tell somebody's like first color work project because they like really haven't thought about that. And maybe they're kind of doing their color work inconsistently. And so basically there's many ways to knit color work. The way that I knit color work, and I'm not saying it's the right way, it's just the way that I find comfortable, is I hold one color in my right hand and one color in my left hand. And the color in my left hand, that is the color that's gonna be dominant. So when I was here, 
And you can see how these stitches pop and these stitches are kind of laid back, the black ones. These ones that were popping forward, that means this color was in my left hand. And what's fun about the Soldana for me, like the like nerd, like nerding out, thinking about your knitting, is like that this color isn't dominant the whole way. I just chose for it to be dominant in this section because I like the way it popped. Like, so for instance, here, the pink was dominant and this color, the Sugar Plum Clary, wasn't dominant. And so, I don't know, it's just something to think about when you're knitting color work. Like, and if you don't think about it, it's okay too. <laughs> but it just, like, you know, it can be fun to kind of think about that kind of stuff. All right, my next finished object did not happen in 2023, but like sort of. <laughs> This, this, these socks, the Remore socks, I finished in 2022, but the pattern released in 2023. I think I finished knitting these after my last podcast, but so sometime in December, maybe or late November, I don't even know. But I took beautiful finished object photos. Well, actually, Kyle did, my husband. He took wonderful um, finished object photos and at my mom's house <laughs> while we were visiting and yeah and the patterns out now on January 1st so that feels kind of like a finished object to me and so basically the Remore socks are a toe up a DK sock cable in front the pattern has an option to replace cables with ribbing and it says read more boop read more on the bottom of the feet. So, I'm excited to have these out in the world now and to enjoy them at home. So, for YouTube viewers, I have a special coupon code for you if you're interested, which is Read More 40. And so, if you put in Read More 40 on Ravelry, you will get a 40% discount and I will keep that code active until Valentine's Day, February 14th. Okay. The third finished object I have since the last time I recorded, and again, I think I did this either, I don't know when I finished this, but it was in 2022, but after I recorded last, I received a Sock Yarn Society subscription box in November and it was this beautiful color that's kind of like I don't know call that variegated kind of oranges it's looking very white and orange but in person it like it's just looking a little blown out there in person it's looking like like an all over kind of orange base it's tonal but it's not looking like that in the camera and there's these like like cranberry type of like speckles and I would never buy myself an orange yarn I just wouldn't and so that was kind of the blessing of getting this um in a subscription box and in in the whole thing came in like a kit with like um this leather tag a pom-pom and a pattern and so I made a hat so those are my finished objects for this for this episode For this episode, I have six works in progress and that's because things got really out of control in December. I basically like just cast on all these things. And it's so interesting because I'm watching other, you know, podcasts on YouTube and videos and people have like really good intentions for 2023. And I have no intentions for my knitting. Like I have work intentions. I have, you know, professional, you know, things like this. But knitting, like, I'm like, I have so many whips, maybe I'll try and finish one of them. I like, <laughs> that's where I'm at. So, but gosh, did I have fun? Did I have fun? And I, though I have six, I love all six. And I don't feel like any of them I want to sit and languish because I love all six of them. So, <laughs> all right. So, whip number one, this was cast on December 1st. And this, is my Woolens and Nash Advent Yarn. And it is BFL base, BFL DK base that I had selected. Look at 
these stripes. Oh, they're so good. And it came with this very plum mini. So I knit these on nine inch circular needles and I finished the toe. So basically all I have left to do is to cut in the heel. I can do this. I haven't done it yet, but I can do this. I will do this. <laughs> um, this I don't think is a super wash yarn. It feels very soft in a non super wash way. And I love this one so much that if Williams and Nash does another advent for next year, I will be like setting a timer, making sure that I get this for next year. It just so fun. Loved it. So that was cast on December 1st. Okay, the next whip, and I've been working on this actively, regularly, was a gift in my stocking. I received from my mother a Zebra Yarns 12 Days of Christmas self-striping yarn. What? So I didn't have enough needles. Actually, my mom had to give me a pair of needles for me to cast this on on Christmas Day. So ideally, it would have been nice to knit two at a time <laughs> so I could be done um, I could have, I guess, knit like two, like two stripes a day or something, but I did one stripe a day. So I completed this like tube. Again, I did it cuffed down and, oh, this is the yarn that comes with it for like whatever you want for the cuffs or the toes. And so it's this like white base, it's speckly. Um, I love this so much. It's like I had this unintentional rainbow theme. <laughs> my admins and I just love it and this is so vibrant um, I was just thrilled I bought this for my mom so my mom got this opened it up and then I got one as well and I want these socks so bad that I I am not the best at finishing pairs of socks I'm very good at finishing a singular sock but I want these socks so bad that I very happily readily cast this on immediately and I'm still just doing one stripe a day. So basically for the 12 days of Christmas, I did one stripe a day. And then after that, I've, I'm continuing one stripe a day. I don't wanna like, I'm not rushing myself, you know, cause I'll finish it if I keep doing that. So yeah, that's so fun. So this is a Christmas day cast on. Okay. I cast on another sock on Christmas Eve Eve, so December 23rd. Again, it was like a gift from my mom, so I wasn't intending on anything with socks, but then as soon as I saw the yarn, I was like, oh, I have to have these. And so it's looking very blown out. Let's look in and picture this yarn, these like bright kind of aquas and greenings and reds, a little bit more toned down or more of a vintage vibe. And the yarn was Nerd String. And it was a custom colorway for an event at Le Mouton Rouge Knittery. It has an event called Hand Dyed Holiday. So it was an exclusive colorway for that event, which I did not go to and my mom didn't go to, but she did buy me the yarn. And I love it. I think I'm going to do the autumn acorn magic heel on this. That's my plan. So then I can just kind of not have to worry about cutting in heels, not worry about doing a heel flap and gusset. Just I wanted to try that. I have socks with that that have been gifted to me, but I like um, have not tried it myself. And so I'm going to do that with these eventually. <laughs> I, so that was cast on December 23rd. And so that's partly why I didn't have extra needles because I cast that on. And then on December 24th, I cast on another sock. Check out this bag from Ginger Snap. You can hear the little snaps. It's my first bag with snaps. I like it a lot. That's so cute. Here's the Ginger Snap logo. They have very cute bags. It is past Christmas and I'm still using this and I will continue to use it because I really like it. <laughs> so
So basically I was in an Instagram swap with like a gift swap with some Instagram friends. This is the Winter Wonderland set from Cozy Cauldron. And it's a very, very bright yarn. And so, yeah, I cast this on, on Christmas Eve. A lot of the people in that group. So it came with this and then these three minis. A lot of the people in that group cast on on Christmas Eve. Okay. How cute is this? I just, so I'm almost done with this sock. And as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna, even though the colorway is called Winter Wonderland, like I think like, and you can definitely get that vibe for sure. I, I But I think this is something I will wear year round. So I did something a little bit more than a vanilla. I did a two by two cuff and then a three by one rib, integrated in some stripes I integrated in the stripes so you don't see a change in pearl bump. Heel flap and gusset, since I love those. And I would like to explore the possibility of duplicate stitching something on the bottom. Like I was thinking maybe like let it snow, but it doesn't really snow where I live. So I was thinking maybe doing like let it rain and maybe like an umbrella. We'll see if I end up doing that or not, but yeah, I'm loving these so much. These have not gotten a lot of attention or this since I cast them on really. Like I got really excited. And then I think what I'm gonna do is finish Anna, like finish the Woolens and Nash socks, finish the Zebra Yarn socks, and then take th that sock energy and switch it over here. Okay, so fun, so fun. And yeah, I just, I'm ha I was having the best time. I basically, so basically I cast on socks December 1st, cast on socks December 23rd, cast on socks December 24th, and then cast on socks December 25th. And so on Instagram, I saw people like casting on like a New Year's Eve or a New Year's Day cast on. And I was like, I should do that too. And I was like, don't. <laughs> so I did have some willpower. <laughs> in Vlogmas, I opened two advents. I opened an advent from Bitten Mitten and opened a Chelsea Yarns advent. I feel like I got more in my mouth. That's the challenge with this. Um, so the first project I'm going to show you is the yarn that I'm using from Bitten Mitten. I am on the 10th day, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm on the 10th day. So I am knitting the Speltus scarf, I think. Basically, you can see it's making this kind of like scarf. And this is super wash yarn. So when I block it, this, I'm sure it'll grow even more. But this is a really nice thick scarf. And it's this beautiful pattern like this, and it's all garter. And once you get the pattern and understand it, it's very, doesn't look like it would be super like comforting. I'm Well, for me, it didn't, because I was initially looking at it, I was like, it looks like you're picking up stitches, I don't know. But it's such a tiny part that you're picking up that I just, I, I, it's very therapeutic, I'm loving it. Um, it's very comforting and I love how these all go like like in the sense that they like are creating this very eclectic looking scarf and I'm gonna have tassels on it too. I mean this is a compliment what I'm gonna say but I don't know if people everybody would feel that way but I feel like when the scarf is done it is something that like Mrs. Weasley from Harry Potter, like Ron's mom would wear. <laughs> and I love that. And so anyway, I, I, I love knitting garter. It brings me a lot of joy. So yeah, I love that. So that is one of my Advents projects. 
Okay, I also, I also opened yarn from the Chelsea Yarns. I loved that advent so much and it was so beautiful that I thought I would like finish the sweater in December. I actually thought that, but I think I just like had a lot going on because it was the end of the semester. I was doing Vlogmas. We were traveling. I'm a mom. There was like all these events and things with Matilda and <laughs> that I really hardly knit. Um, And I really, I haven't touched it, but I was looking at it today and I was like, oh, I just cannot wait to knit this. But I think, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna pour any energy into this right now or wait a little bit. I want to because the yarn's so soft. Like I'm holding, I, I'm on day two. <laughs> I'm, I, the, I'm holding the Advent yarn with this mohair called First Snow. I love it. And these stitch markers in here are so cute and I'm loving them with the yarn and I'm just, I'm loving this, but it's just like, I have too many projects and it's like, I don't know. Like I'm almost feeling like a little unfocused because I have so much that going on that I love right now. So I think my plan is to just like, finish those two socks and see where the, see where the knitting energy takes me. Maybe I'll start focusing on this. Um, oh, the pattern, it's a sweater pattern called Color Play that was written to use Advents. Though it doesn't give you clear directions of like when to switch yarns, but and that's probably why it's called color play. So you can play with your own yarn and figure out what you want to do. Um, I'm the way I did it for the first color is I just knit until I ran out. And so I'm thinking I might do that. But if I do that, I'm not going to use all my minis and I love my minis, but I was like, I can do something else with them, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where we're at. Anyway, loving it. Though I'm not knitting it. <laughs>
and they had it knit in the DK because it knits, if you knit it at a worsted gauge. And so these are my colors and I had it in my stash. And so when I saw Tammy Gore's test call for a three color worsted shawl, I knew that this would be good. And so what I'm struggling with, I'm gonna cast on tonight, is the, it starts with a two color brioche and then there's like a pop. And it's like, well, I could do this, these two, and then I shouldn't say a pop because it's like her colors were like, two of them are kind of had a pop to them. But I could do these two in the brioche and then have this after as the pop. Or I was thinking I would enjoy this as a brioche and then have this kind of tying it in at the end a little darker. So I'm having a hard time deciding. Just talking through it now is making me lean more of this way than having these, but I do the way, like the way that these look together and I do think that this would really pop. And then when you're wearing a shawl, it's like sometimes that pop is what shows and like, obviously like I love this color. I mean, I love these colors, but like the idea of like this being what's showing and like this what's being near the face. I don't know. I need to think about it more, but I'm so excited. That testament is due February 25th, which will be the weekend of the Roasted Yarn Crawl. And so I would like to finish it before that weekend so that I could take pictures wearing it on the Roasted Yarn Crawl, or at least wear it on the Roasted Yarn Crawl. Welcome to the sip sip knit section of the episode. When I think about the sections of like these episodes that I would like to keep, I feel like sip sip knit is here to stay because it is just like, I feel like it captures like who I am. <laughs> I just want to be like in this corner, drinking my tea or my coffee and knitting. So I thought for today I would share like, a cozy classic and then something new. So basically a range, something that I've enjoyed for a long time and then something new I'm enjoying. So for my cozy classic, I placed an order with David's Tea. Um, I am not an affiliate with David's Tea, just side note, like it, this is just like me loving David's Tea. <laughs> and so I placed an order with David's Tea and I bought as much Candy Cane Crush as I could. So this is one of my new ones. <laughs> and I think it's out of stock now. So maybe I shouldn't be showing this to you. <laughs> but if you have a favorite steak tea, let me know what it is. But I have a lot of favorite David teas, but I do think my favorite, like my hands down, my favorite holiday David's tea is Candy Cane Crush. And so I've been drinking a lot of Candy Cane Crush and knitting. It's like my like way I've been winding down since we've returned from traveling for the holidays is at night. I make some Candy Cane Crush and I drink my tea and knit. And it's low caffeine, so it is a black tea. It does have some caffeine, um, but it's at least a low caffeinated one. Um, if I'm able to, I will pop in a picture of like what this tea looks like. It has like little like white chocolate nibs in it, like peppermint. And I am somebody that likes to pretend if it's a black tea or a chai, I like to add like cream to it. This tea, I don't add cream to it. It feels like a full body tea to me. And maybe it's just because of that white chocolate in there already that they're adding. But basically I... Like just, I don't add any sweetener. I don't add any cream. I just make this tea and drink it. And it's just, okay, I'll keep stop going on about it, but I love it. Like, will I though? I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, candy cane crush, so good. So I've been doing that for days and days. And I think I have a little bit left of another packet in this and then it's gone. And I think I'm gonna be crushed, <laughs> pun intended, okay. <laughs> So that's a classic. I've enjoyed Candy Cane Crush for a long time and I'm continuing to enjoy it. So that is my cozy classic I am sharing. Here's something new in 2023 and it's like a, a different part of Sip Sip Knit. I usually exclusively talk about coffee and tea and now I'm talking about something 
a little bit different, but it's something you can drink with your coffee. So last week, I think Monday or Tuesday, I started a supplement that you would take with your tea or with your coffee. I guess you could take it with your tea as well. And it is called Magic Mind. It's a little green bottle. Maybe I'll put in some rolls of me drinking it. Um, yeah, and it has this like really pretty label of a wave and it says, do more, stress less. And I don't consider myself like a woo-woo kind of person. That being said, this has worked wildly well for me. And the first day I took it, like I, alongside my coffee, so that's how it's advertised is that you like drink this alongside of your morning cup of coffee. Like essentially the owner of the company, like um, I was reading online, like he basically like needed to drink less coffee. And that was sort of like the impetus of like this being developed essentially um, is that he needed like a healthier way to have, um, energy without drinking and consuming lots and lots of coffee and lots of caffeine. And so to kind of enhance the effects of the coffee, if you will. So yeah, I, I was like, I don't know if this will work or not. And I watched some other like YouTubers that had like tried this. And I was like, I remember, um, one of the YouTubers I was watching was like, I don't know if I'm feeling anything the first day. Like maybe it's just like a placebo effect. I drank this the first day and I was like, whoa. And, you know, I'm a math education professor. And one of the things we do as a professor besides teaching is research and writing. And so that particular day I had a big writing project and I was seriously so focused on it and like more focused than I normally am. And I, I was like, this is wild. And so anyway, I've been doing this for over a week now and, um, I do feel the effects of it in terms of focus and like, I, it's mind blowing to me. And basically, um, I feel the energy and the focus so much that I didn't take it over the weekend. And that is not how it's recommended. Basically they tell you like, and like it comes with like a little guide and like how to take it. And it's like, this is like the effects build up. Like, so you should like drink this, like, um, over time, like it comes in a pack of 15. And so you should do that whole pack like in a row. But I like really felt intense focus and energy. So I was like, I wanted to chill over the weekend. So I took a break and did not take it over the weekend. So I'm feeling the effects and not even taking it like really the way I was supposed to. Um, okay, a couple things. It tells you to, um, if you don't, it has matcha in it. So that's one of the ingredients is matcha, adaptogens, nootropics, and it's sweet. I can confirm it's sweet. I was a little bit nervous about the green color, but it actually like tastes really good and um, almost like a little fruity, a little floral. Um, I like matcha, so the matcha doesn't bother me, but it does say that you could have this with in steamed or iced milk, like oat milk. That would be a good idea. I haven't done that. And it says add this to your sparkling water. I don't have sparkling water at home, so I haven't done this. But I do have oat milk and coconut milk, and I do have mangoes for smoothies. So I was thinking I might try this actually in a smoothie. We'll see. Um, anyway, I, it's kind of a weird thing like for me to share because I usually just talk about coffee and tea. And um, I had very low expectations for this. Like I was gonna make another pun, which is like my mind is blown for my magic mind. <laughs> but like it actually is because I was thinking oh, like this will be whatever, but I am, um, I really like it a lot. Um, and I can just, I've, I have a lot to write right now. I'll talk about that maybe like in future episodes, um, when some things are uh, ironed out, I guess, if you will, but I have a lot to get done writing wise as a professor this semester. And I am, um, I, it, this has been really helpful to like get that flow going for me. So anyway, that is something new along with a classic. <laughs>
there's a lot of acquisitions, way more than there normally is because, uh, because of Christmas and things like that and traveling. So basically, I'm not even going to show you all my acquisitions. I'm just going to show you like my favorites. <laughs> okay, so probably the favorite, like, let me show you my, I don't know. I was going to say my favorite Christmas gift, but then I'm like looking and there's like at least three or four favorites. So I don't know. Here's a favorite Christmas present I received from my mom. So from the grocery girls, they had these kits. This is called Fairy Lights, six miniature knits to make and share. This is a pattern. So all this, these are so cute. Um, I was thinking it would be fun to make these and have them like on a bunting or like on a string for my mantle. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like this kind of thing, knowing myself, I would need to start not in December. I would need to start this now or in the spring or in the summer if I want to have this for Christmas. But it's so cute. And it came, I also got this, this bag, which is adorable. It's like a nice little kind of leather pull. And inside is a kit to make those things. And I would love to. And like, look, little mini pom-poms. And it came with like stitch markers, this very cute sticker. And I think this is a candle maybe. Yeah, this is burn within sight. And like, it's glittery. I just love this a lot. Like that was a very nice gift and I'm really excited about it. I'm not gonna cast it on this month. I know that, but I would love to do that sometime this year so that before December, if I, so interesting is cause like my motivation like to do this kind of stuff would be in December, but like just looking at how many works in progress I have this December, like where I was casting on all these Christmas socks and advent projects, like it just feels unrealistic for me to cast this on in December. I need a different goal for that. Okay, another favorite gift that I love is this 52 Weeks of Easy Knits from Lina Publishing. So basically they have like lots of 52 Weeks books, like 52 Weeks of Socks, 52 Weeks of Shawls. I don't have any of those books. I have looked at them. Um, various ones of my friends have this. Um, I could just, I don't know. I was going to maybe talk about some of my favorite patterns, but it's just tough because there's so many I like in here. I had a bookmark on a beret <laughs> because I love berets. I just even this cover, this cover sweater, you can knit this plain. Like you don't have to knit like this. And I think one of the samples does have it plain in the book, but basically you can have DK yarn. And I actually have cream DK in my stash, like a sweater's quantity. And then you hold fingering with it, like scraps or your advents, whatever. And you make this marled stripey sweater. It's so good. Um, yeah, it just, there's a lot of sweaters that I like in here. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's so good. And this was really special. So my mom, was working through, I assume, email with Anna from Zebra Yarns, and they made a custom color work, a, cu a custom colorway for me. And I think Anna does that for anyone. That's my understanding. And so, yeah, so basically my favorite color is pink. I also really do, my other favorite color is yellow. And Matilda's favorite color is purple. So it stripes pink and purple. And then I'm going to have yellow cups. Like, I couldn't love this more. I, when I opened this, I wanted to cast this on immediately. And I was going to, but then I got these yarns 12 days. So then I was like, okay. Um, but basically, once I finish a couple pairs of socks, maybe two or three pairs of socks, this is the next. Because this is amazing. I was also thinking 
even if I don't finish two or three pairs, then I might do a Valentine's Day kind of like sock cast on maybe. So maybe finish two or three pairs or February 14th, whatever comes first. Because I also have a hot pink and black from Anna that I would love to cast on in February. So yeah, those are exciting. I, in my, I don't know if it was my stocking or a gift, but basically I love Katrinkles things. And so they're Katrinkles, either stitch markers or progress keepers. Essentially, um, like there's a Rosa yarn crawl, there's a Chicago yarn crawl. And so these are the stitch markers for the Chicago yarn crawl. So like the yellow one says Chicago yarn crawl. And then like the blue one, like is like a picture of the Chicago skyline. Um, this is like the Chicago flag. So, um, yeah, so that was cute and I really like those. Okay, my next acquisition isn't something that was purchased, but just something that's nostalgic that my mom let me have. Um, so when I was in middle school, I was very into, I mean, I, I knit then as well, but I also really liked doing these like beaded crafts. And I did quite a bit of these where basically like it's a little tiny thing. I would turn them into like pins. I did like a little Santa one. I did a little black cat one. Um, and they say holiday ornaments and the brand is Mill Hill. And so like I had this like little wooden box that was gifted to me by a neighbor that I like kept all that stuff in. And um, anyway, like my mom said I could have um, have it, but basically I had some kits I never had finished. And so here's a little penguin. So I would love to just do this like out of nostalgia again. So that was fun. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you the 25th day skein of the Chelsea Yarns. So the Chelsea Yarns event had 25 mini skeins. And then I think you could like also get like extra if you wanted, like an add-on of a full skein, which I did, and no regrets. So beautiful, it's called Festive. Okay, it's really blown out. Okay, creamier. And then look at these pops. Oh, this is so good. My only thing, I love it so much. My only thing is I love it so much that I don't know what I want it to be. Like, do I want this to be a Musselburg hat? Do I want to use this as socks? Like, what do I want this very beautiful skein to be? I love it a lot, a lot. So, yeah. Oh, one more acquisition. While I was in the Midwest, Kyle and I also visited his family, which they live in Illinois, but like on the border of Illinois, Wisconsin. So we go to Wisconsin regularly. And Emily, the botanical knitter, who's my friend on Instagram, she was visiting her family who lives in Wisconsin. And so we met up. Oh my gosh, I feel like I got mohair on me again. <laughs> we met up, we met up at a coffee shop and it felt like we had been friends for a long time. And like we were knitting, drinking coffee, eating snacks, it was great. And she's like, hey, there's a yarn store nearby. And so we went there. And they don't have an Instagram, but I have their card here. It's called the Orange Kitten Yarn. And yeah. And so I wasn't planning on buying anything there because I have a lot also. My suitcases were just busting at the seams and I was shipping things home and it was just, you know, I wasn't gonna buy anything. But there was like this beautiful yarn. You'll see here, look at this. I can't, like art yarn. There was art yarn there that was made in Wisconsin. I should have some of the details, but like a local person, local wool, local, local spinner made this, these beauties. These were the two right next to each other. And there's just so much fun going on. Like just sitting here, there's like, look, there's this like ribbon, there's some sparkle, 
There's this big floof, a little lock, it just pink. This one has like kind of a random flower. I just love this a lot. And I, so I bought it. And so I get in, so basically like Kyle's dad, like he drove me to the coffee shop. So he was picking me up and then I texted like, I'm no longer at the coffee shop, I'm at Orange Kitten. So he picks me up and I get in the car and he says, oh, what did you buy? And I'm like, whatever. And then he's like, what are you gonna make with it? And I was like, I have no idea. And he's like, well, at least you're honest. And I still have no idea what I will do with this. I've never knit with art yarn. It is reminiscent of like the knit collage stuff that I've never knit with, but like, like look at online, like probably a lot of people. Um, I have no idea. If you have any suggestions, like if you've knit it with art yarn, let me know. Tell me what you've made. Um, if, you knit, if you know, if you, do you have any ideas? <laughs> let me know. But I just, I couldn't walk away from it. And it's just like a special memory because I got to meet up with Emily and I bought this when I was with her in Wisconsin. And it's just really, in my opinion, so cool. So, but no plans, no idea. Let me know if you have any ideas. <laughs>We are to the personal section of the episode, though I have been sharing personal information <laughs> throughout this. So anyway, but there's no more knitting. So yeah, if you don't want any more knitting content, like we're done. <laughs> so if you did enjoy any of the knitting content, don't forget to like or subscribe. So, okay. Reading, since I last recorded a podcast, I did read some more books. And I didn't talk about them on Vlogmas, but I'm not going to talk about them here because I don't even remember what they were. But I would say maybe if you're interested, you can follow me on Goodreads and I'll have that information below. Um, but I do remember a book I just finished reading because I just finished reading it today. <laughs> and it's the first book of 2023. And that is Malibu Rising. So I loved it. I was really drawn in. Like I felt like it was suspenseful. Now I have a friend who loves to read and she's like, Nicole, Malibu Rising is not a suspenseful book at all. Don't even call it suspense. Okay. So it's not suspense. It's very dramatic. I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> um, my friend, Kristen, she was like, I don't know. The ending was like, whatever. I was like, I enjoyed the ending. Um, I, I really, I, I really enjoyed it. I think I will be looking into other books by this author. Um, yeah, it was just, yeah, I, I just picked it sort of randomly <laughs> and, um, I, I didn't even know what it was about when I started reading it. And then, yeah, so pleasantly surprised. Um, okay. At the start of December, like end of November, start of December, our family went to Leavenworth, Washington, which is sort of like a Bavarian town. <laughs> and we just had a little kind of vacation, relaxation. And while there, I started reading this book. But I haven't touch touched it since. And that was because it was the end of the semester, we were traveling, and I didn't want to carry a big book with me. And so my hope is that maybe I could get back into this now because though I am not very far in it, I'm on chapter nine and Though I started it a month ago, I loved it. I, when I was reading it, it's all I wanted to be doing. Like I just wanted to be in my hotel room cozy reading, but I'm a mom and there was other things to be doing. But I, um, I just, I wanna, I would like to, now that I'm home and I'm finding flow in the semester, get back into this. While we were traveling, I did start a new book because I was like, I should have just brought this book. I was like, well, this is lighter. <laughs> and I had just bought it too. Just side note, I was at Barnes and Nobles and I had just bought, I was Christmas shopping and I look at this cover. And then it, but then, 
So it was, I justified that I needed to bring this and start this on the trip because it was about Christmas. The cover was pink, it was lighter weight. But then I was like, it takes place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And my husband Kyle went to school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and we would be in the Midwest. And so I just thought, okay, I, this will be great to start. So I started this and I've been slowly reading it. It's hard to read when you're visiting family because you should be engaging with your family, not reading around them. But um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It is a little magical. It's called Once Upon December. Yeah, it's a little magical. like, And it feels like when I'm reading it, what it would be like to, to, to step into like a Hallmark movie. Like this feels like it could be like a Hallmark movie or one of those like kitschy Netflix Christmas movies, something like this. Um, I like it. I mean, I'm only on page 98. <laughs> Um, part way through. Anyway, I, I'd like to, who knows if I'll finish this this month, but I feel like at some point it's like, why are you reading a book about once upon in December? <laughs> like, I don't, I, like, I don't want, I need to finish this this month is what I'm trying to say. Although I, you could read a Christmas book whenever you want. <laughs> so that's what I'm reading for personal life. I don't think there's too much to update you on because you could just watch Vlogmas. I did that it was the second year of doing Vlogmas and I really enjoy it a lot. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, it is a little bit of extra work and, and a busy season, but I don't mind it because it's, it's really fun. So I'll probably be doing it again next year is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so I will just update you like about a few things that have happened since Vlogmas. So I think like the first day we were back or second day we were back, I met up with Anna from Zebra Yarns and her daughter. So me and Matilda or Matilda and I and met up with Anna and her daughter. And we met up at a really cool place. It's called like Get Air. I think it basically is just like a giant warehouse of trampolines. And it was really fun to meet up though. I feel bad for Anna because like Matilda and I were a basically hot mess. Basically this, I haven't jumped on a trampoline in a long time, like since probably 2009, 2010, I used to coach cheerleading, like competitive cheerleading. Um, and I think that was like the uh, last time I jumped on a trampoline. Okay. So that is, you know, a decade ago, essentially more than that. And yeah. And so anyway, I'm hopping around just living my best life on the, in this trampoline place and I pee my pants. <laughs> then Matilda hurts her ankle. <laughs> so we ended up heading out early. Like I was like hoping we'd like have lunch or something with Anna, but like, <laughs> anyway, she, she's still my friend luckily after all that. And so anyway, hopefully we will hang out again soon and I won't pee my pants and Matilda won't hurt her ankle. So Matilda's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> um, okay. So last weekend we went to Pacific city and the waves were wild. I just think like, um, I am sure it's always like this at the coast this time of year. Um, I haven't often seen waves like this. So it was like my first time seeing these just like wicked waves. But one of the days, one of the nights we were there, it, I think it was Saturday night. Yeah. Um, in the evening, it like stopped being windy. And then it was like in the mid fifties and it wasn't raining. And so we were walking down the coast and there was like all this sea foam it was almost like snow and so i took so many pictures they're so cool hopefully i'm putting in pictures of the sea foam here and it was just so cool and that same day i had a latte from a coffee shop there called stimulus called sea foam latte essentially it was like creme de menthe um with white chocolate i think it was really good anyway Sea foam. That's what I was, <laughs> that's what I wrote in my notes. Sea foam. <laughs> um, yeah. And my last update is just that it's a new semester. It's a spring semester. And I have just finished my first week 
back. Um, this was my first week of classes and you know, truly the beginning of a semester is like more magical to me than like New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Like, you know, like I know like a lot of people, like I can just see their energy on Instagram and the podcast of like a, like a new year and like new goals. And that is how I feel as a teacher with every new semester, which is awesome because I essentially get that like at least three times a year because I have like the spring semester and then there's summer session, which is either like less teaching or no teaching. And then the fall semester. And so like, I feel like I get these like moments throughout the year and I love that aspect of it. The first week of school as a professor is also um, the best. First, like I would say a few weeks, maybe a month even, because the students like, they're all coming to class on time. They're all coming to class. And there's like everybody, not just me, has this like fresh hope. And so like the students, like I would say all, like all my students start off working really hard. And so it's like really fun. Um, <laughs> and of course, like, um, but school and university can't always be all fun. And so things get a little harder as the semester goes. But um, yeah, I just, I just love the beginning of the of the semester. So um, I always call it actually, when I'm talking to friends or colleagues, I call it romantic. Like the first weeks of school of the semester are romantic and they're just, yeah, that's how I feel right now. So anyway, it's been a good week. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for being here and part of the community. Just a little reminder, like, I would love to, like, everybody's welcome to come to the knit night and the Zooms, which will be the first Thursday of every month. Love to connect there. Um, I'd love to connect with you over on Instagram, too, if you ever want to reach out and chat. Um, yeah, so, yeah, making knitting friends here has been a joy, and I want to continue making knitting friends. So, anyway, um, thanks so much for being here and chatting. I hope you're having a great January as well. Bye!